So uh, welcome to all of you uh, on behalf of the ELISA team and uh, particularly on behalf of ELISA knowledge transfer team. So today, uh, Giacomo Martinano and uh, myself, uh, Simon Vrecha, uh, both uh, consultants uh, working for uh, European Commission's uh, Joint Research Center, uh, will be hosting uh, this webinar with the title Data-Driven Methodology uh, for Elect Electricity Characterization of Districts. Before going to the, uh, to the topic of the webinar, maybe to share with you a few details about the ELISA. So as you can see on the next slide, ELISA stands for the European Location Interoperability Solution for e-government. It's, uh, it's an, an action, the part of the ISA Square program, uh, which is a um, European interoperability program aiming at providing cross-border and cross-sector interoperability solutions for public administrations, businesses, and citizens. There are more than 15 actions uh, under the umbrella of this uh, program, while uh, our ELISA action is the only one uh, focusing on the location dimension. So since the adoption of the ISA Square program, ELISA has supported building a location enabled digital government, public administration, which uh, a public administration which actively uses the value and the benefits of the spatial dimensions and its processes. <clears throat> Sorry for that. So the concept is built on three main important elements, which are the digital transformation, location, and uh, interoperability. Uh, so Elisa will actually, with uh, all these inputs, good practices, and uh, legacy, provide also firm inputs for the future activities within the digital program, digital uh, Europe program, related in improving uh, and enhancing uh, the European interoperability by use of the location data and uh, intelligence. Uh, so as you can see on the next slide, Elisa um, aims to break down barriers and promote a coherent and consistent approach to the sharing and reuse of location data across sectors and borders. And this by supporting different uh, uh, policy initiatives on the European and national level by providing reusable interoperable cross-border and cross-sector frameworks and solutions, uh, as mentioned for public administrations, businesses and citizens by discovering how emerging trends and technology enable more effective use of location data and by building a, um, a geo knowledge base to inform the and train stakeholders and promote the adoption of good practices in innovations in location data. Uh, this is being done, uh, as you can see on the next slide, by types of four types of uh, inputs uh, by carrying out studies, by de developing frameworks of guidelines, recommendations, and reusable tools, by developing uh, pil pilots and applications. So this, is, this part will be also the part of the, today's webinar. And as mentioned, by uh, um, uh, building up the ge geo knowledge base. Of course, that was co covered by many different, uh, different fields and areas, which you can see on the right side on the slides, and I won't go into the details. Uh, as you can see on the next slide, there were some achievements in the past five years uh, uh, on the LISA action, maybe some mentions, a few of them. So the main one was for sure complementing the European interoperability framework and NIFO with an extensive location interoperability framework and state <coughs> of play assessments. Helped out uh, to helping out to put the inspired directive into practice uh, with tools for data providers and strong focus on the use cases. Um, build uh, an extensive community of European and international stakeholders, also with the help and support of the engagement of the ISA Square member states. And of course, raise awareness on new approaches to location enabled digital transformation. Uh, as you can see on the next slide. So to achieve the objectives mentioned before, uh, knowledge transfer play quite important and active role in that. So knowledge transfer, we understand is a as a complex process for disseminating knowledge from one individual team organization to another uh, for to solve problems, to foster in uh, innovation and to increase uh, efficiency. Uh, so the, 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 the knowledge transfer actually builds on, uh, has built on three concepts. So establishing a mutually beneficial collaborative community with its stakeholders, as mentioned already, creating an interactive environment, enabling co-creation and open innovation, and by turning uh, outputs into actionable knowledge. And uh, today, 
as you can see on the next slide. Uh, we will try to do this uh, with uh, our speakers uh, that cover the topic mentioned in the beginning. Uh, we have uh, two speakers from the International Center for Numerical Methods and Engineering, uh, Building Energy and Environment Group. One is uh, data scientist Gerard Moore. The other one is uh, Jordi Capriano, the group leader. And of course, we have also uh, a colleague from the European Commission, from the DigiConnect, uh, Javier uh, Orozco Mesana, from the Unit for Technologies for Smart Communities. So they will uh, speak and what they will speak about and what will be on the table will present Giacomo in the following next slides. Please Giacomo. Thank you very much, uh, Simon. So what we will cover today, um, I will uh, provide you uh, with a brief introduction to Elise energy and location applications. Then we will have uh, uh, three presentations from the uh, Simon and the B group state-of-the-art data-driven methodologies and technologies for electricity characterization of districts, how these methodologies and technologies may support the business of startup companies, and how them may support urban planning and energy efficiency policy of a regional government as a typical reuse of the methodologies and the technologies that you will see in the first presentation. Then we will have our uh, intervention from our colleague Javier from DigiConnect about urban energy simulation supporting the local digital twins toolbox. And then we will conclude with the key messages, challenges, and future outlook with questions and answers from the floor. So let's, uh, let's proceed and uh, let's give a brief introduction to Elise Energy and Location Applications. So Elise has developed cross-border pilots and applications to test location data interoperability principles in several sectors. For instance, in the marine sector, supporting the implementation of the uh, Marine Strategy Framework Directive. In the transport sector, supporting the implementation of a transport, intelligent transport system directive. In the cultural heritage, exploiting a pan-European gazetteer service and in the energy efficiency sector, which is the, the, the application domain of uh, the, uh, this webinar today, supporting public administrations, businesses, and citizens engaged in the energy policies uh, cycle. Regarding the energy efficiency sector, let's see how location data interoperability principles and methodologies are being applied. First of all, to leverage location data at building level, as an enabling factor to scale up a set of methodologies to assess energy efficiency from local to district and city level and even beyond. And to use location-based data to support different types of stakeholders engaged in the energy efficiency policies uh, cycle. Why we are uh, focusing on buildings? Because buildings are uh, responsible for uh, at least 40% of the final energy consumption. Over 75% of building stock is older than 25 years with a consistent, um, consistent uh, numbers of uh, final energy consumption, as you can see. And uh, according to recent uh, uh, studies, an extensive renovation of uh, buildings could cut 36% of the energy consumption by 2030, even though there are new objectives to 2050. We uh, have applied uh, this in uh, uh, co-creating and co-executing a series of use cases with a series of uh, partners in the frame of uh, two uh, non-monetary collaboration agreements. And here you can see uh, the title of the use cases ranging from a digital platform for uh, public lighting implemented in Italy in, uh, in uh, um, more than 8,000 municipalities, the harmonization of energy performance certificates of buildings, the harmonization of uh, uh, data contained in the sustainable energy and climate action plans, harmonization of energy simulation to assess the energy heat demand of buildings, and what uh, the, the use case in the frame of which we, will have, we have organized this webinar today, is the assessment of energy performance of buildings, not from the uh, building fabric as in the previous um, 
listed use case, but use, uh, using energy consumption data from smart meters in order to take, to take into account the user behavior. And finally, also we had a use case about the role of geospatial information on a regional energy strategy. So with this, I would like to hand over to Gerard Moore for his uh, presentation about the state of the art uh, data-driven methodologies and technologies for electricity, electricity characterization of districts. Thank you very much, Giacomo, uh, for the opportunity to present this. Um, I don't have the control of, because it doesn't appear to me here in the, in the Zoom. Region. So I can, I can move the slides if- Yeah, yeah, I, okay. I, it doesn't appear. Okay, so, so let's so uh, yeah, yeah, let's go to the first one. Um, basically, the state of the art uh, of this uh, energy characterization of uh, of uh, energy consumption uh, is more is a lot very related with the building a stock modeling. So uh, basically, we have two approaches for for the building a stock modeling. Uh, the first one is the the bottom up approach, which begins with a detailed representation of a system which is a constituent part of, of that is further aggregated to a whole system level so the, for the field in a stock. In this case, building archetypes are used to um, characterize each building or, or a sample of buildings. And the outcomes or the, the key performance indicators are uh, scaled it up to summarize the whole building stock in a generalized area. By contrast, top-down approaches uh, begin with an aggregated view of the overall stock area so the building a stock, uh, which is then aggregated into subsequent subsystems. Uh, and in this approach, the, the energy performance of, uh, of groups of buildings uh, are analyzed as a black box in, in a statistical terms, uh, defined it as a large thing with inputs and outputs following historical trends. In our, in our method, uh, it's some kind of mix up, uh, a mix up um, methodology because it's not a bottom up from itself because it starts from the from the postal code level but if we understand the building a stock as, as bigger than a postal than the postal code level that we did the, the validation of, of our methodology um, then it's a bottom up uh, um, methodology go to the next step, uh, next slide please uh, the data requirements for this um, for this uh, technique it's uh, is high frequency electricity consumption, understanding high, high frequency as hourly, hourly or quarter hourly data. Uh, this is provided by Data Dis, which is the in Spain it's the the data platform uh, of the DSOs, so the electricity distributors. Also, we are using building area and building uses, uh, so you know to understand if you're building it's residential or industrial or offices. And, and, uh, and quantify the, the amount of uh, area uh, of, the, of the building. And this is obtained from the National Cadaster of Spain. And uh, weather data, we, which by the moment we are obtaining it from the dark sky service. Go to the next slide, please. Uh, and here I, I, I summarize optional data requirements, which well are, are optional, but I think that uh, they are required for for uh, for calculating uh, the whole the whole features that we will show later in the in the web application. But as as the as uh, parameters or features required to calculate the the, the energy performance indicators uh, are not are not needed but uh, they are very useful for other things. Uh, so uh, here we have the, the year of construction of, of buildings, the, the building volumes, which are also obtained in the, in the National Cadaster, and the socioeconomic indicators, which um, ob are obtained from the, from the experimental um, statistics of the National Statistics Institute of Spain. Um, which gives us the, the amount of annual incomes and, uh, and sources, so the expansion, salaries, these kind of things, and the number of people, the average number of people per household, the, the, Guinea, the Guinea index, which is you know, the, the difference between, or a relation between minimum and maximum uh, annual incomes and the population age. Go on, and the next slide. So this this information that uh, that I was talking about it's uh, it's represented in different in different levels, and those are the levels that we will deal with in this uh, in this methodology. 
um, basically are the, the postal code level, the census tract level, and the building level. So uh, I put these two plots here because uh, I think that it's it's important to understand the 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 different uh, approaches uh, in rural areas and in in, uh, in urban areas. So in the uh, left we have the the rural areas and and also a little a little uh, zoom zoom in which is the uh, an, an urban area. So here we see that the the postal codes that are the the red uh, lined uh, contours. Uh, the postal codes are quite similar in shape, uh, even uh, smaller in some cases than the uh, census tract codes, uh, which are the colored the colored uh, shapes. No? And 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 in, in urban areas, it's uh, it's very different because the here the census tract it's it's much more detailed. So the information which is uh, at this uh, geographical level, it's much more detailed for the for the application of, of analytics to, to that. Go to the next slide, please. So basically, the the, uh, the uh, electricity consumption uh, that we that we are using here in the in this in this validation is the postal code uh, level, uh, and it's also uh, split by economic sectors and tariffs. Uh, the weather data is estimated by by certain uh, latitude longitude. So we basically we use the um, the centroid of of each postal code in order to obtain the, the weather data. And uh, the cadastral data is at building level. So we are using the, the Inspire harmonized uh, data from the national cadaster. And uh, the socioeconomic data it's at a census tract level. So we have good good uh, def definition of uh, of this data at, uh, at urban at urban levels okay go next basically the methodology is uh, is um, what it do, what it do is is to uh, get all the data download all the data that it's needed and then try to transform uh, to tabular data and so in a, in a tabular format which is uh, more uh, uh, useful for for uh, for doing analytics in in R, and uh, this ETL process, which we call ETL process, it's uh, programmed in in Python and and QGIS. So uh, several um, functions, function very interesting functionalities of QGIS uh, can be launched directly uh, with uh, without uh, using code uh, in Python. And then we we store this data, uh, this tabular data, in uh, in database in a database called uh, MongoDB, and then uh, we analyze we analyze this data um, in 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 R. Okay, so uh, well maybe I will explain later on, but in this analytics and visualization part, it's mainly two parts. It's a, a back a backend uh, a backend doing the analytics, and a visualization also done in R. Uh, precisely with a, with a library called Shiny, in order to to visualize uh, interactive uh, maps and interactive plots uh, of the of the KPIs estimated with the with the backend. Go next, please. The the methodology steps are the first one is to reshape all the all the data sets to to the postal code level. So we harmonize uh, somehow the uh, geographical level. And then for each postal code, uh, the first step is to uh, data clean, uh, data cleaning of, of the of the electricity consumption data, uh, infer usage patterns using clustering classification models, um, and then make a regression model uh, using as output the the energy use intensity. Uh, in this case, it's consumption divided by built area of that postal code. And, and, the, and as inputs, the calendar information, the, the usage patterns, and the weather features. Once we have this uh, regression model, uh, we obtain a disaggregation of the electricity consumption to base load, heating, cooling, and uh, holiday terms. And also, uh, the, in, in, in our case, as we had information during the, the first COVID-19 lockdown, we, we try to estimate uh, its interaction. So uh, finally, uh, the the last uh, the last step is is to uh, integrate all this disaggregation uh, KPIs 
in a web application interface to visualize the, the results. Go next, please. The, the data cleaning part, it's uh, essentially it tries to delete or uh, remove uh, noisy data. So uh, we, we, we assume as valid consumption range, range uh, per, per contract tariff and sector, this, this formula here, with, which basically uh, says that uh, the con a, cons a valid consumption should, should, uh, should uh, be um, higher than zero and lower than the, the maximum contracted power by, uh, by, a, certain, by a certain contract in, uh, in one tariff and in one economic sector, multiplied by delta T, which is one hour in our case. Uh, the second one is a, a data padding of, uh, of, the, of the data sets in order to detect gaps and, and, avoid, and avoid them in the, in the analytics. Uh, and also we uh, detect outliers using a Z, a Z score uh, um, greater than four uh, using a rolling window of two weeks. There's no, there's no much uh, in this case, there's no much uh, outliers in the, in the data provided by data these. But uh, even though it, I think it's necessary always to, to have this, to take into account this, uh, these steps. And finally, uh, there's a creation of an all contract synthetic tariffs in order to understand better uh, which is the, the, the normal or the, yeah, the, the representative um, uh, characterization of uh, a whole economic sector, for instance, not always an economic sector and a certain tariff which uh, in Spain, we have like uh, six, six, seven tariffs. So the possibilities are, are quite high. Uh, go on the next, on the next slide, please. Here uh, we are, um, we, we, we want to explain a little bit more about how we infer usage patterns. So basically what we want to do is to detect uh, the, the, the daily, the relative daily, the similar uh, relative daily load curves. So uh, it's like if the, if the people is using more energy in the mornings or in the evenings or in the midday and, and then uh, classify uh, and, and those days in, in similar, in similar, uh, in, similar uh, in a similar feature in order to use this information in the in the modeling in the modeling phase. No? So uh, basically we use uh, a spectral clustering. Uh, alternative, alternatively, we could use a Gaussian mixture, a Gaussian mixture model that we, we started to use this Gaussian mixture model, but we finally are using spectral clustering in order to, to, class, to clusterize these daily load curves. And uh, one thing that is quite interesting here is that uh, for this clustering phase, we are not using all the all the um, all the data. We are not only using data from March to May and, and from September to to November, in order to uh, get day, those days that don't have uh, much weather dependence. Okay, because we want to avoid that and we want to. Uh, Characterize the the usage patterns of the of the people, not the not the consumption directly the consumption of uh, of the of the total consumption of the people. So uh, basically, we we need to reclassify uh, in a, with a classification model or in a multinomial logistic regression model uh, those days that are, were not uh, were not clustered, and we use uh, obviously a, a classification technique. Okay, go to the next uh, step and I will show you some results here. Um, you see uh, two examples of, of, this, uh, of this clustering and you see that uh, even the, the, there, are not, there are not quite hard differences, but well, maybe in the second case, in the, in the right case, it's, uh, it's more obvious. But in the first case, we see that uh, it seems that uh, the, there's, there are three peaks but uh, the, the first two the, the first two are, are quite close together and in the second and in the second cluster we have much more difference so uh, it's interesting for the for the regression model uh, to, to, to split these two types of, uh, of days which may not concern only on uh, on uh, the day of the week or the uh, or, or the or the week of the month or the month of the year 
but uh, maybe with uh, some interaction between the people and the and their consumption so that's why uh, we introduced this this information to the to the regression model go next please here we have the the modeling the modeling uh, representation that we use for to characterize uh, the district the district consumption uh, basically we are using uh, a penalizing linear regression model uh, which are which is fitted using l1 l1 regularization um, here in the first equation you have we, we have the, the the consumption uh, at time t uh, that must be equal to a base load term which interacts with the with the usage patterns and then uh, a heating a, a heating component which interacts with the day part and a cooling component, which interacts with also the, the day part. And finally, a, a, noise, uh, a noise term, uh, which is assumed to be white noise. Uh, this BT, uh, BT uh, coefficient, uh, it's, it's a multi regressor So we have, uh, we have uh, omega, omega B, which is the, like the centroid, and then two, uh, uh, for year series, one regarding the um, the day of the week uh, and uh, the, the day, sorry, the, the hour of the day, and one and another regarding the, the the hour of the week. So the hour of the day and the hour of the week. Go on, please. Here are the are the two regressors regarding uh, heating and uh, and cooling. So in the first one, uh, well, I will explain more in I will not explain more in detail, but in in regarding this um, this uh, weather dependent uh, regressors, uh, we divided uh, between three types of uh, of, uh, of interaction. So one is the the low pass filtered uh, heating temperature or cooling temperature. Another one is the is directly the, the heating temperature or the cooling temperature. And another one it's the the interaction between the the uh, the wind speed and the and this uh, this heating and cooling temperature. Uh, basically, um, this heating and cooling temperature are obtained uh, using uh, optimizing a balanced temperature. So we said, uh, for instance, uh, that a building or a, a set of buildings uh, start to be heating dependent uh, from uh, 14 degrees to, to, to lower values. No? So this would be the, the balance temperature and uh, for the cooling, for the cooling uh, um, case, then uh, the balance temperature would indicate that if, if, it's, if it's, for example, uh, 20 degrees, then you will have uh, more consumption if, if the temperature is higher than 20 degrees. And with the low pass filter uh, interaction, what we do is that uh, is to consider a little bit uh, the the inertia the inertia of the building. So, uh, sorry, Gerard, we have uh, five minutes left. So probably with the slides with more technicalities, you can be a bit uh, faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go on, please. The next one. Uh, the modeling the modeling part um, uh, was divided in in seventy five percent training, twenty five percent validation. Uh, using uh, randomly distributed dates, and those and those are uh, all the all the terms uh, that have to that are unknown and have to uh, have to be uh, well at least uh, fitted uh, using the the penalized regression model and also a genetic algorithm which is which is used used in this case. Go on, please. Here are some some of the results of this. Uh, Clustering plus uh, plus classification plus uh, regression models. Uh, so for uh, for uh, one uh, single postal code and uh, and a single economic sector, which is residential in this case, we see uh, the the clusters that are obtained uh, for each tariffs here uh, in the in the left in, in the left uh, plot, and in the right plot we see. The tendencies uh, of uh, base load, heating, cooling, and holidays and COVID, uh, COVID affectation. Go on, please. Uh, we also can can see using the the consumption KPIs, we can see the the intraday evolutions during a national year. So between between base load, heating, and cooling, 
uh, consumption, estimated consumption, and each tariff, each one of the tariffs, uh, even in, in a heat map form. So in, in, the, in, the, in the plot of the left and in the plot of the, light, of the right, we see a natural year and the and the affectation. This is an interactive plot in the in the web version. Here it is it is static, but uh, here we see the consumption in gray. We see the consumption uh, due to base load uh, in red. The consumption due to heating and in in, in blue the consumption due to uh, cooling. Go on, please. All these uh, all these. Um, these KPIs and the, the, the plots that you see in the two uh, slides before uh, are implemented in a web application uh, programmed in, uh, in Shiny that uh, I said a few moments ago. Uh, and, and, the, and we have some filtering capabilities in order to represent better the, the KPIs and be more understandable to people who, who will search in, the, in, this, in this map. Go on, please. Uh, there's another tab uh, additional to the to the KPIs on, on a map, uh, which is the KPIs in detail, uh, where uh, some of the some of the plots that you see uh, later uh, was or before, sorry, uh, was are represented here, and you can you can move and, and play around uh, using using the variables that are you are you are interested in. So basically here we have uh, disaggregation details uh, at each postal code, uh, economic sector and, and tariff level, and also the aggregated results to understand this, the tendencies in, in, the, in the energy consumption. Go on, please. Then is an, there's another tab, which is uh, regarding benchmarking, uh, where um, here, uh, the, inter the most interesting thing is that this benchmarking is not uh, done in, in absolute values. It's done uh, using the, the areas, uh, a normalization of the areas, of the, of the built areas of, the, of uh, the both uh, postal codes, and also uh, a weather normalization of, uh, of the two postal codes. So then the, the results, uh, the comparison results are more, um, are, are better in order to uh, make some kind of uh, inference between uh, difference that may occur between the between these two postal codes in detail, and also these these plots are, uh, are can be uh, can estimate differences in time in a time varying manner. So somehow it's a time varying benchmarking. Go on, please. Um, the last, the last uh, tab, it's, uh, it's related with KPIs correlation, which is, uh, with, which is made for, for to infer uh, correlations between uh, the socioeconomic data and, uh, and cadastral data, economic data, and, and uh, consumption, the consumption KPIs, and could be used in order to understand if there's some kind of, some tendencies that uh, uh, follow, uh, follow certain, a certain relation. And I think that it's one of the things that uh, we we need to to work more hard on it uh, in the future in order to to um, well to boost uh, a little bit the, their their application in real in real situations. Go next, please. So the conclusions finally is is that uh, the the methodology that we presented uh, it's it's good to inference. Uh, uh, information about buildings and their occupants in terms of uh, energy consumption. Basically, we, we have these those three uh, um, parts. The first one, the user behavior patterns are useful to, to detect uh, um, self-consumption potentialities, so maybe PB, uh, PB um, generation, self-PB generation, and uh, occupancy patterns of, of buildings that uh, could be useful for, for some application. And uh, the weather dependent, it's useful for, for assessing the, the energy performance of buildings, even it's not uh, in the case of electricity. We have the, the COP uh, of heat pumps and these things that may, may change a little bit, uh, but it's useful to understand if a certain area it's, uh, it's performing better or, 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 not, or not better. No? So in this, uh, in, the, in the, 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 third, the third point, it's the, the base load quantification, which is also useful for in order to see if, if a certain area have 
uh, more energy efficiency, uh, considering the the area, the built area, and the and the consumption they are making. Not taking into account the the weather the weather dependent information. Go on, please. And uh, finally, uh, another conclusion is that this web web uh, app uh, functionality provides uh, a very interesting sandbox for testing visualizations. Uh, for this kind of, uh, of characterization analytics of districts. Go on. I think that it's the last one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gerard, uh, for um, having uh, provided, uh, uh, having given the possibility to, to put hands on in, the, in all the uh, technicalities, uh, the methodologies and technologies allowing such uh, a kind of a characterization. Uh, integrating uh, uh, location data at different level from different sources, uh, aiming at uh, their interoperability. Uh, you also uh, probably didn't mention that from the data this uh, uh, portal, uh, you you were able to connect through uh, APIs. So uh, it's true that there is a state of the art uh, in this in this presentation. But now let's let's end over to Jordi uh, in order to see how all these uh, very interesting stuff can uh, support uh, the business of uh, startup companies because the B group uh, uh, Jordi is part of, uh, it's really an active uh, uh, group in, in, in Catalonia. Please, Jordi. Um, hello, uh, good morning. Thank you very much, Giacomo, for the introduction and for, for the invitation. Um, well, let, let me introduce a little bit that we as, as um, very, uh, Close to market group, we are we have some experience in, in, in promoting and generating uh, startup companies. We we created two startup companies. One is not uh, a startup um, anymore, but it's, it's a consolidated company and was created in 2012. And the last one was was created in 2017. And both are related to uh, offering energy services to municipalities or to electricity trader companies. So, well, in this presentation, I will only going to, to show some ideas and some potential uh, benefits of this kind, kind of, of technologies or methodologies. But honestly, we haven't um, been able to, to clearly define a, a, a business model or, or, or a, a possibility to miniaturize these services yet yeah, we are working on. And so I'm going to show you our main things and thoughts about this. So the added value of this of, the, of this kind of method is that um, they can be very useful in, in these new emerging business models, which are addressing the concept of energy communities. Because we, we think that in any kind of, of promotion of an energy community, we are talking about this two level. So with this kind of, of, of methodologies, we can provide very useful information and insights of these district levels. Besides, there are, there's another potential market or, 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 or group of companies who are managing and, and, and designing district heating and cooling uh, uh, installations. And we, we think that this kind of stakeholders could be interested in, this, in these tools because they, they, this kind of uh, district networks and, and, and heating networks are also designed to be implemented at, at district level or at, or at, uh, at urban level, but at the zip code level, which is the, the most uh, uh, similar level we are working on. Of course, the public administration, I think this is the, the, the first uh, kind of actors that would be interested in this in this kind of methodologies, because they need they need this kind of, of, of analysis for taking decisions in the, in their energy transition plans and in, in urban planning. In, in the next uh, slides uh, below, I will show you some examples of, of the applications that a public administration can implement. And the last uh, stakeholder groups we have identified related to engineering consultancy companies that can use these uh, data-driven methods to substantiate their energy services they are offering uh, also for energy planning and, and urban district uh, level analysis. Uh, go on, please. 
of course, in order to 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 consider that this this uh, potential market uh, solu marketable solutions, there are some challenges we have identified that should be overcome if we want to to really um, get uh, uh, solutions that can be monetized. Monetized. The first one is that there's a lack of of data and and. Uh, the level of digitalization of the thermal energy networks specifically or especially the gas sources is very it's very uh, yes yeah, not so well developed as in the case of of the electricity networks so we think that more effort should be put in on, on this on this field in order to be able to gather and to and to uh, use this kind of, of data that is very useful and very, in very <coughs> it's very important to characterize um, districts uh, in, in energy networks. Another problem is that the geographical scale of the available direct data is at the zip code level, which is maybe too high if we want to go more into detail, and this this too high level uh, force us to 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 downscale um, the the level through uh, some kind of proxies and approximations, and and there's no standard procedures to, to define how to downscale data from the zip code to the district level. So this is another challenge that that should be addressed. Um, more in the side of of the market, the the, the first contacts we have had show us that. Um, there's a, a market for these added value services based on referencing data, but it's not very clear or we haven't been able to, to identify clearly. And besides, the potential energy service companies have shown a big interest, but it seems that they have not expressed a direct link or a direct connection with their uh, main core business. So it seems that there's an interest, but we haven't been able to, to, to link with their daily um, uh, business, which can, can make uh, these, uh, these uh, added value services uh, valuable for them. Uh, go on, please. Yes, and uh, yeah, um, uh, Jordi, I think that so it was excellent how you uh, showed first uh, uh, the potential benefits of uh, for different types of uh, stakeholders and also the clear uh, challenges that you have identified for a, a real uh, market, uh, let's say, uh, exploitation. Uh, but now it's interesting to see in the next uh, five minutes how you started reusing these uh, uh, methodologies and technologies for uh, supporting uh, urban planning and energy efficiency policy of a regional government. So please continue. Yeah, in this next slide, I'm, I'm going to show you the first experience we have, we have practicing um, related to one of the stakeholders, which is the public administration. Uh, the first case study I'm going to show it's um, uh, driven by the Department of Vice Presidency of Territory and Digital Policies of the Generalitat de Catalunya, which is the, our regional government. And it, it belongs to a, a project funded by, by them, which is called Pipelates. And um, this, this project is, is a very wide uh, and quite big project, which includes several uh, pilot use cases. And one of them is related to um, land planning and, and uh, urban planning in, in a wider scope than, uh, than the energy efficiency. So the main objectives of, of this uh, sub project within the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest one is to develop and implement georeferenced geo web environment, able to gather, harmonize, visualize and provide APIs for specific use cases related to industrial parks housing developments and residential districts. And the, the second part or the second main objective is to validate this, this uh, web platform and also the KPIs in the coastal area of Catalonia, which in, in the right side, you can see the a map of Catalonia. So the, the coastal area includes uh, from, from Tarragona, which is in bottom to Girona, and it, of course, including Barcelona city. No, go on, please. The outcome ones that we have uh, defined with them 
is the web environment uh, based uh, on QGIS as a, uh, acting as a backend and a map viewer that here in the, in the right side, you can see an example of this map viewer, which will graphically show these KPIs and which are a, a, a high number of KPIs we are going to develop and also the data analysis results. The other outcome would be a set of the statistical learning tools designed to support the administration in generating land planning scenarios. So once we show them the diagnostic of these specific areas we have selected, we will provide uh, methods and, 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 and algorithms to allow them to generate uh, future scenarios. Go on, please. Here you can see some examples of, uh, of this uh, map viewing or map viewer in, in blue color. You can see a, an industrial park uh, where you can see the different options we are offering to, to the users uh, in relation to visualization. On the, on, the, on the right side, you can see it's, sorry, but it is written in Catalan. But, but um, uh, for instance, you can see we will be able to show the users, the, the, the technicians that are going to work in the in the department, the percentage of, of occupation of, of these uh, industrial parks, the overall surface, the number of, uh, of uh, workers, the uh, percentage of, of economical activity and the intensive activity. These are some examples. Go on, please. And here, once you, you are within one of these uh, industrial parts, as an example, you, you will be able to, to determine more detailed KPIs. For instance, here you can see the percentage of, of uh, urbanized or, or the percentage of buildings or uh, structures in relation to the overall land surface, the classification of the land. And uh, on the bottom, you can see all the, all the KPIs we would be able to show them. And this could be performed and implemented not only for industrial parks, but also for, for housing and for uh, groups of, of, of residential uh, housing. So go on, please. The second example I would like to show you, well, the first one is we are still working on and it will uh, take, I think, the next 12 months to, to finish this previous project. And another example in which we are also involved is a, an European funded uh, through Horizon 2020 call uh, project, which is called ePlanet. It means the European Public Local Authorities Network for driving the energy transition. This project is more focused on energy transition. It's, it's not so uh, dedicated to urban planning, but more to, to uh, energy, energy transition planning. And uh, the objective is to establish a transfer information sharing framework uh, among public authorities. Then to develop a multi-level working group related to uh, enable a collaborative approach in the development of energy transition plans. And finally, to enable digitalization of the energy transition plans. Go on, please. This uh, project will involve uh, three pilot sites. One will be uh, the, the province of uh, Girona. And specifically, we are going to work with uh, 220 municipalities. And from, from these uh, municipalities, almost 200 has uh, signed a covenant of measures agreements and now climate action plans. The other pilots will be in Crete with 24 municipalities. And the last one will be in, in Zing, which is the Czech Republic. And we will be able to, to involve 300 municipalities. So these are two examples of how are we planning to uh, use and, and to uh, spread this kind of uh, data driven georeferencing methods and methodologies. So that's all from my side. Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you, Jordi. Thanks. It was, uh, it was uh, interesting to see how the work uh, uh, made uh, uh, with, uh, with you and Gerard in the frame of the use case of the Elise energy allocation applications at the end um, uh, is uh, already uh, in a deep, uh, let's say, reuse uh, stage with uh, and, and, and even growing. So I, mm, I think it was extremely interesting to, to see this. 
Now let's move to uh, our colleague uh, Javier, who will uh, have uh, the last uh, presentation of the of the webinar related to urban energy simulation supporting the local digital twins toolbox. Javier, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Let me introduce very briefly uh, some results we've been evaluating from different inputs. The first one is provided from a project that was working uh, at a Spanish university because I'm currently working as a second national expert here at the uh, unit C3 in the European Commission and some others which might be relevant for the analysis of this webinar. Please, next slide. Basically, uh, the data which uh, has been provided for uh, the work we are dealing with on energy analysis has different sources, utilities, consumers, uh, the specific databases, even in some cases simulation models, which are used nowadays for analysis on billing for different companies, network control, again, for companies, but also some other issues related to cost control, building design, and in very few cases, European development. Uh, within these uh, specific tasks, geolocalization can provide a very relevant input for intelligent networks, especially with the upcoming development of uh, the renewable sources and their interaction on the stability of the network, also uh, geocolor um, positioning a new producer farm from uh, sun capturing uh, generators, uh, wind generators and some others, and uh, not much more than analyzing a, a carbon footprint and decision making processes. All this obviously is very important for the development of the different objectives within the EU Green Deal but there are some specific tools that I would like to introduce which uh, can be based on this also on the future digital Europe program and the development of the data spaces which can be used for further work using these types of tools. Please, next slide. The energy data challenges which have to be addressed is first that data are uh, held by platform economy companies, uh, by private companies, let's call it that way in order to make it more un understandable. It is of high interest and becoming very, very accurate through the uh, smart meters that are being installed in most European um, uh, consumers. The appropriate governance models uh, will provide also uh, additional data sources and background for analyzing the evolution of this input, uh, which can be linked to um, weather events, uh, extreme uh, weather events, and further problems, which have to be uh, considered for making a, a good uh, prognosis of the situation and for preparing for future uh, stability of the network and uh, in uh, the overall sustainability of cities. The organizational, legal and cultural challenges which are uh, addressed by the forthcoming DACTA Act from the European Commission is also a, a key uh, player for allowing interaction of data. All these data will be held within the new data spaces, uh, Green Deal data space, the smart communities data space, and many others which are currently under development uh, within the Digital Europe program. Uh, also to be considered is uh, what's the purpose of this analysis. In other words, the stakeholders' priorities, which is very different depending on the situation, but all of them are interacting for the future uh, shape of our cities. And of course, we need to assess data quality, which again will be guaranteed with the EU data spaces. Next slide, please. Let me introduce a collection of tools that have been developed within a, a European project, Grow Green, which is a, one a, a Horizon 2020 project, which a, has applied a simulation methodology for testing different scenarios and for a, assessing the performance of them into the uh, possible outcomes or development of different urban strategies. This uh, project uh, has developed 
these tools uh, for the cities of Manchester, of Roslav, and also of Valencia. The system is quite simple and uh, based on sim a similar approach to other uh, tools that have been introduced even within this webinar. Uh, here you have the example of the city of Valencia, where you can see that a neighborhood is uh, split into different segments, uh, colored ones, which then are uh, checked uh, for the uh, types of buildings which can be typically found. So first of all, we have the cadastral data, which provides some GIS data uh, with the appropriate area and information on the types of building. These types are matched to a database, which was developed under the program uh, episcope uh, with a tabula uh, web tool for checking the main characteristics of these buildings and also uh, within this uh, episcope project they developed a different simulation for the uh, typical consumptions which can be expected based on the year of construction the, the regulations which were up and running at that time. So in the end, we are matching each of the uh, areas, each of the buildings within this district uh, from the cadastre in a digital format. We are matching that to hiked, making very simple simulations of the building, very simple 3D models, which is a prism, not more than that, including also the number of windows, orientations. So in that way, we can first know what's the expected consumption based on this database on tabula and also use the um, different simulation tools like uh, the uh, energy plus uh, open source modeling tool with uh, databases uh, including climate expectations for every nearly every big city in the world so that we can see how by altering the conditions of the buildings, including better insulations, or by providing a new refurbishment for the different elements on the neighborhood, we can expect an evolution, a simulation of the, uh, for example, carbon footprint, the future carbon footprint, which can be expected with this neighborhood. And uh, in that way, introducing the assessment of the most effective elements which can be expected from uh, the different cities. In the end, uh, using a, a GIS visualization, we can uh, really obtain a very fine analysis on the expected outcome of the different policies, including a realignment of uh, urban elements, including more parks to check the green corridors which might uh, ease, for example, the uh, temperature condition, the uh, hot spots in the city, and some other elements for uh, the complete evolution and their impact on energy consumption, because all of this is obviously related. Next slide, please. In the end, uh, these uh, tools which are based on existing databases that will be uh, easily accessible with the new European programs will solve, uh, for example, companies' challenges uh, because the legislative framework is already uh, in, in position, uh, the lack of interoperability of the different data sets will also be solved uh, thanks to the, uh, for example, the INSPIRE directive and some other minimum interoperability mechanisms which will be av available. And then uh, the scalable data which will be shared by the different stakeholders will allow better prescription and a more competitive approach on, for example, where and how to install the different renewable sources of energy and also the possibility of using cars, electric cars for storing energy and uh, adapting the buffer on consumption and use, which is uh, one of the big challenges for these big companies. Regarding uh, citizens, obviously the energy bill is becoming increasingly expensive and energy poverty is an issue which has to be addressed through this uh, analysis, through the possibilities of building new um, uh, neighborhood uh, 
associations for producing and storing their energy and scaling up the different possibilities within the legislative framework. In the end, the overall sustainability, which is a driver not only for citizens but also for companies, can be addressed more easily with these prescriptive tools. Next slide, Bill, please. Uh, so, all in all, uh, the founding elements for this uh, possible tools, uh, which we have summarized very briefly, are uh, included within the development of the uh, Digital Europe program. Here you have a very simple introduction on how these data spaces, the ones which are developed uh, from Europe, will be integrated, will be coordinated for new marketplaces, uh, for exchanging the elements and the services through the uh, appropriate middleware and for obtaining a, a perfect mix of edge computing, cloud interactions and uh, high performance computing for developing the uh, models, their prescriptions and the analysis which will be key uh, for the, the development of these possibilities. Next one, please. So uh, it all starts by developing a sound strategy for business to government data uh, sharing, which will help into the further impact of the EU data spaces and connected to the future EU regulatory uh, framework uh, from Data Act and artificial intelligence security and further inputs of data. In these data spaces, we will be able to address energy transition, not a market ecosystem development, and also some legislative elements like positive or negative carbon tax, uh, consumer farms, and some other issues. So this is uh, the expected outcome from uh, the uh, digital uh, strategy of the European Commission, which uh, will in turn be developed in the upcoming years. Next one. I think this was the last one. Yeah, so Indeed. nothing else yeah. to add. Thank, thank you, you very much. Th thank you very much, Javier. And uh, I think it's uh, clear for all our uh, um, participants that the next steps uh, highlighted by Javier are applicable to both the approaches that uh, uh, in, the, in the projects, uh, the applications presented by Javier uh, start from the uh, from tabula, episcope, so the, the characterization of the building, building stock somehow, and then uh, with other characteristics uh, and to, to, to estimate the, the energy consumption whilst in the, in the um, Gerard and, and Jordi's presentation, the focus was on uh, exactly the measured uh, energy uh, consumption, how to build uh, usage patterns and uh, to at the end uh, concurring to the to the to the common goal to reduce uh, energy consumption at the end so uh, in this uh, let, let, let me share the 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 the, the key messages uh, in, in in this uh, in this slide in which basically uh, referring specifically to the uh, to the presentation of, of Gerard and then to the challenges highlighted by um, Jordi but also by uh, Javier somehow the downscale challenges and uh, is it a matter of granularity of statistical and socioeconomic data that we use uh, in, the, in, in, in the model to, to characterize from the energy consumption point of view, the, the, the postal code uh, and to, to, to benchmark postal code. So at the end, applying the same methodology, we could imagine to benchmark even smaller districts or even smaller neighborhoods. So is it a matter of granularity of this, of this data or is it a matter of uh, privacy issues related to energy consumption data that at certain level uh, must be aggregated in order not to violate uh, the, the privacy of the owner of, uh, of each uh, smart meter or, or both. Uh, it's, a, it's a combination or both or, or maybe uh, uh, other uh, challenges not uh, identified in these two. And in terms of future outlook, apart from the reuse of the methodology for urban planning at the governmental level that uh, Jordi showed, uh, we believe that uh, what we presented today 
uh, at, at some extent can uh, support the implementation of the energy efficiency related actions of the recovery and resiliency na national plans, which are uh, one of the hot uh, topics at, uh, at the national level, and then uh, to be coordinated at, uh, uh, at regional and even at local level. Uh, with this, uh, I, this is, this is the, the, the main findings that I would like to, to share with you. I don't know, Simon, if there are uh, uh, questions on the chat. I don't think so, or there, if there is any, any, any further comment that uh, any one of the participants would like to, to share. Giacomo, it looks like no, it looks like uh, you all were totally clear and detailed <laughs> and exact uh, with uh, what you have presented, including the, the, the next steps and key challenges. So even though I challenged the, the, the audience twice to, to post some comments, there are no comments. So maybe the last opportunity, if somebody would like to, to ask to comment something at this point, um, it's look, it looks no. So the, the yeah. audience uh, so keep, uh, because, satisfied uh, with what you have uh, provided. Because, yeah. Yeah. And because we are 10 minutes uh, uh, beyond the, the schedule, I propose to, uh, to, to close this meeting, thanking all of you and, uh, and uh, following us on these uh, channels uh, where you can find also other webinars related to other use cases and uh, Simon, final words to you? Yes, please, thank you. Thank you very much, Giacomo. Yes, it's, uh, during the presentation, you've been only invited to join us on the ELISA community, so where you can find out about ELISA action, about uh, what is going on on ELISA, uh, as well on the energy application pilots, uh, and uh, you can find uh, also the access to all the webinars. You've been also invited to uh, subscribe to ELISA YouTube channel to see the videos. In any way, uh, you will be contacted as well uh, with the links of the videos when it will be processed. And uh, this is it, uh, let's say, if, uh, before, uh, before the summer break with the uh, ELISA webinar. So uh, we'll see um, after, after the summer break in September. Thank you all the presenters for today. So Giacomo, Javier, uh, Gerard, and Jordi. Uh, and uh, thank you all participants and have a nice uh, summer break and see you in September. Thank you very much to all and bye-bye. Uh, <laughs>